So, in a bit of surprising news, Warner Brothers and Monolith posted an update on their community page detailing that they will be removing, that's right, removing gold, war chests, and the market economy from Middle-Earth Shadow of War on July 17th. And what that basically means is that after that date, you can no longer buy any sort of microtransactions. Interesting, but I do have to wonder why they waited 10 months to do this. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about during this video. What is going on guys? Randall Thor 19 the man with the million back again with a, another video. And if you missed it, make sure you check out my review for God of War 3 Remastered on the PS4. I just finished it, put up my review. I'm getting really excited for the new God of War. So check that video out when you got the time in case you didn't see it uh, by the notifications because YouTube has been really crappy with that lately. So let's move on though and talk about Shadow of War. Now, if you guys recall, Shadow of War, along with, say, Star Wars Battlefront, really had a lot of negative uh, feedback. A lot of players were upset about this idea of, uh, you know, loot crates, especially in a single-player game like Shadow of War. Now, Star Wars Battlefront, it was way beyond the hate and criticism that Middle-Earth Shadow of War got, and they honestly are never even going to put the loot boxes back into you know battlefront 2 it was there for up until release and then they remove it and now it's like they're unlocking characters for star wars battlefront it was a complete uh mess and in fact it's kind of affected other games coming out recently i mean sea of thieves they were coming out and said hey no microtransactions no loot boxes state of the k2 said no loot boxes only like paid dlc expansions a lot of the new games coming out this year are going to stay far away from the loot box fiasco that Star Wars and Middle-Earth have seen. And it looks like Middle-Earth wants a second rebirth, so to speak, because they're getting rid of microtransactions in the game. So let's take a look at what, they're, uh, what they actually said here on the website. Uh, they said they want to thank everybody uh, who played Shadow of Wars. They've learned a lot. And since the game released last fall, they've been listening to our feedback and they continue to update and improve the experience. With that in mind, there's going to be a series of free updates in the coming months to offer current fans and new players the best Shadow of War experience that they possibly can. And this whole idea of removing the microtransactions stems from the Nemesis system. It says here, the core promise of the Nemesis system is the ability to build relationships with your personal allies and enemies in a dynamic open world. While purchasing orcs in the market is more immediate and provides additional player options, we have to come to realize that Providing this choice risks undermining the heart of our game, the Nemesis system. It allows you to miss out on awesome player stories you would have otherwise created, and it compromises those same stories even if you don't buy anything. In order to re fully restore the core promise of the Nemesis system, we'll be permanently removing gold, war chests, and the market from Shadow of War. This means the option to purchase... Gold with real-world money and the ability to gain orc followers from war chests will be removed. And of course, they're going to give us a specific amount of time to, for players to use their unowned gold. And if they don't use it, they'll get in-game items. So, while it's great, my first take, because I have a couple different thoughts on all this. While it's great that they realize their mistake and they want to make the game better for everybody, that's always to be applauded. However, there is a cynic in me. And I'm sitting here wondering, hmm, it's 10 months later. Obviously, the vast, vast, vast majority of sales for Middle-Earth Shadow of War have already happened. So what would be the reasoning of removing all this microtransaction stuff? Because this is was supposed to be a games-as-a-service type game. You know, you can buy things, there'll be updates, and that type of stuff. What's the purpose of removing it 10 months later? And the cynic in me thinks, well, Rand, I mean, that's that's easy. It's because there is a group of people out there that would never play this game as long as it had microtransactions. Ah, so it's an easy update. You remove it all. Say you learn from the feedback from the players that were playing the game for the past 10 months. And you get a good PR spin by saying, you know, we listened to our fans and what they wanted. We learned and we realized this wasn't the best idea. So we're going to make it uh, so the microtransactions are gone. And those people who had problems with the microtransactions being in, well, they can come play the game and enjoy it. 
So that's the cynic in me, is that the sales have dropped off, and this is a way to potentially garner some more sales out of people playing the game. The other thing is the fact that they admitted right here that the nemesis system and the idea of buying orcs somehow, uh, you know, undermines the whole heart of the game. It's like people were giving you that specific feedback before the game even launched. All the stuff that you I literally just mentioned while reading what they're saying here was stuff people were telling them about their own game before it launched and when it launched. So while it's great that they came to the realization that people were right, that the gamers who wanted to play their games were right, it does strike me as a bit callous to do it 10 months after the fact. Maybe you should have listened to people before the game came out and you could have even had greater success in the beginning. Now the game sold incredibly well from what I've, you know, read and, and heard. The game sold incredibly well. It could have sold even more, but this just strikes me as just, yeah, we know we screwed up. Yeah, we know there's people out there who will never buy our game. And we're going to, you know, take this PR win of removing these horrible loot boxes and gold in the war chests. And we'll get the people who weren't ever going to play it to come buy it. You know, we have a couple DLCs out now, a couple expansions, you know, give reason for more people to come in and buy that. But I don't know what it is with Warner Brothers, man. They are kind of so shady when it comes to this type of stuff. If you recall, there was the whole thing with the developer who died and they immortalized him in the game. But they were only going, to, and, and you could you could buy them, and like the proceeds would go to the family, but it would only go to the family or only go to the fund in like 40 of the 50 states because of laws, and none of the money overseas would go to it. And you know they said, and they had to like you know change things and just make a one-time payment to the family. There's a lot of weird things that have gone on with with Warner Brothers. I mean, their microtransaction system and all their games are are entire like really screwed up. So part of me just thinks it's cynic. It's cynic in me. They want more sales. Sales have died down. Nobody's really buying gold war chests anyways, so there's really no lose situation there. It's not a it's not a it's not a loss for them because nobody's buying it. And they figure new people coming in to essentially buy the expansions and buy the game would offset any losses that they would incur by removing the microtransactions. But Reality is I'm just disappointed in seeing a developer who I really have looked up to and enjoyed their games, Monolith. I really enjoyed the first Middle Earth uh, Shadow of Mordor game, and I was looking to play in Shadow of War, and I'm still looking to play it. Maybe I'll play it once this update, because they're they're changing some of the stuff to the Shadow of War section, uh, where it was just kind of defend the fortresses. They're adding more narrative elements and things of that nature to make it better. So maybe now's the actual time to play it. But it's sad to see them finally come to realize what exactly everybody was saying about their microtransactions before the game even launched. But they said, no, this is how the game was intended to be made, intended to be played, it doesn't affect you because it's a single player game. All the excuses that Monolith and Warner Brothers and everybody that worked there and all their PR, all the excuses that they came up to justify putting it in there, only to come find out 10 months later that we were right. And that providing a system to buy those things undermined the heart of their game it allowed people to miss out on awesome player stories that they would have created and it compromises the same stories if you don't buy anything that's that's their words literally right here but this is exactly what people were telling them beforehand this is exactly one of the reasons people don't like this type of microtransactions and loot box systems yeah sure people will give passes to overwatch where a loot box is just cosmetic items right People, people gloss over that, especially myself, because I don't care about cosmetics. But there is this sort of sliminess, this sort of greed that comes into when you're talking about a, a single-player game, when you can buy these things, and it just doesn't feel right. It has never felt right. And here we have a developer saying it compromised, literally, right here. It compromised the heart of the game. Well, not really compromise. 
risked undermining the heart of our game, the Nemesis Mystum. And it compromises those same stories, even if you don't buy anything. I'm happy they realize this. It's just 10 months too late, and the cynic in me thinks this is all done for a quick PR, a, you know, approval, and more people buying the game who are never going to buy it. But that's the cynic in me. That's the cynic rand. Uh, what do you guys think about about all this? Are you excited for them to finally remove the microtransactions? Are you actually going to play the game because it has been all that stuff is removed? Are you actually going to go through Shadow Wars considering they're adding new narrative el- elements and it's streamlined for a better experience? I know that's the thing people really railed on. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you share it on social media. Hit that sub button, hit the notification bell so you get this video, even if YouTube's notification system or sub box is screwed up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.